The following is episode 9 of chapter 2 in the Comprehensive Course for Cinematic Procedural Environments in Houdini and Karma. To learn more, click the link in the description. Now that we have created the vines, we need to proceed with looking at how we can detangle them from each other. As right now, they overlap, many of them overlap each other, and we would, would like them to be detangled from each other. So you can do also the same thing for the main geometry of the tree, but I'd like to have it like that because it is going to be a solid tree trunk at the end, and I don't want to detangle it from, from the center of the tree. So we'll focus on doing that for the vines only. There's many ways to detangle geometry, but there is no proper setup already existing in Houdini to do this. So we'll need to create our own custom methods. And I'll go through two methods that we will use throughout the scene. One is a procedural way uh, without any simulation. And the second method is using uh, vellum simulation. So the first method we're going to look at now is using a node called detangle. So let's put down the, the node, it's called detangle. And this node takes in curves. So that's connected to the curves in here before the sweep. And let's look at it. So right away it, it errors out uh, because it needs a previous position. So a position attribute for each point. Let's use the P position attribute that we already have. So let's write P, capital P. And as you can see, it's already doing something. So what it's doing right now, it is taking each point on the geometry and moving it away from the surrounding points. So let's say a point in here would be moving this way and a point in here would be moving this way. And the result is a bit of a, a mess really. So it's a, it's a bit too jagged and jittery. So we'll need to work with this and smooth it out a bit. So the method we're going to use is we're going to use this node, but we will calculate its vector that it's going to move the, the point in and we will propagate that to other points nearby. So it will kind of have some of that as well, but it will taper out over distance. And then once we have the, this vector, we will apply it to the to the curves. So let's start by adding a, a point op. And let's connect the first input to the input in here and the second input to the detangle. So the, the detangle takes into account the, the P scale that we've added. So without that P scale, the, the size would be massive because it will give everything a value of the default thickness that is present in here. So we need the P scale to, to stay in here. So the first uh, VOP node in here, we will call this calculate the push vector. So calculate push vector and let's dive inside. So what we need to do here is a very simple operation. We need to just calculate the difference between the moved point and the static point. So let's import the position of the moved point by using the import point attribute and let's connect the point we're calling to the ptnum which is the current point and let's choose the input to be the second input which is the the detangle we have in here the second input. And let's sub subtract the static point from the moved point. So subtract and let's add this in here. Let's do the opposite. So shift R, we can do the opposite. And then let's export this vector bind export. And then let's write, let's call it push vector. And it automatically takes a, a vector shape, although it says float in here, but we can change it to a vector if we want. Great, so that's the push vector. So let's move back up and now let's apply that push vector without doing anything to it just to see that uh, things work. So we need to add a point ball and let's call this one apply push vector. Display it and let's go inside and add that position of the push vector to the position in here. So let's connect the position to the position output and let's add an add node, connect it in here. And let's bind in the the push vector that we created. So this is called push vector, and it is a type vector attribute. And let's connect it into the add in here. And as you can see, it is doing what we wanted it to do. So it's basically taking the same values that we had in the detangle in here and adding them in here. So now that we have this, we can smooth this attribute in the middle in here. So let's add a, a um, blur attribute node and connect it. And let's 
choose the push vector in here, push vector, and let's not pin it to the borders on the edges. And let's try a value of, let's say, 100. And as you can see, the difference between before and after, now we have the curves moved away from each other in a smooth way. To get this to work effectively, we need to iterate over this multiple times so we get a larger distance moved. So just like we did before in here, we'll use the for each number so we can iterate using a, a number iteration we choose. So let's put down a for each number and let's drag this end node at the end in here and let's connect these into the for each begin and the end to the output in here. And let's connect the for each begin block into the scale. So now if we display this, it is not going to give us any difference. So what it's doing now is just merging 10 iterations on each other, which is not what we want. So this one has a lot more primitives than this one. As you can see, it has 10 times the amount. We needed to just iterate and take that iteration up again and do the same thing on that iteration again. And in order to do that, we need to, we need to change the gather method to feedback each iteration. And we need to do that the same thing in the beginning block in here. So feedback, uh, fetch feedback. And right away, you can see the, the distance between the curves is a larger. And we can control this by the amount of iterations we want. Great. Now, I don't want this to be affecting the edges of the curves. Uh, and we already have an edge uh, group that we created previously. Uh, if not, we, we can also create that again using the group edge node that we created before uh, but we don't need that right now since we have that group in the blur node we can se uh, select the group we want to be affected and the group we want is edges is the name of the group but we want the opposite of that so so we'll use the exclamation mark in the beginning great let's name this one to smooth push structure we can delete this metadata block since we're not using it and one more thing I want to create in here is a way to detect collisions. So if we have a geometry nearby, we don't want it to go inside that geometry. There is a collision input in here, but we will not use that. Instead, we will use a method by grouping the regions that are inside the collision, and then we will move that region outside of the collision. So if we drag a line in here and add a group node, and let's call this inside collision or just inside let's change the group type to point and let's remove the base group in here and add a keep in bounding box region and let's do y object now if we connect this input to the tree we had before so this tree in here okay connect it to this dot in here and let's make another dot by holding alt and dragging on the line so now if we look in, at this we will see it is grouping some of the the points that are inside the, the collision. But this is not working perfectly because all of the collision geometry is not one geometry. So we need to kind of merge that all together by using a VDB method that we used previously. VDB from polygons in here. So if we look at this, this is already a VDB. And this is the voxel size. So we, we can change the, the resolution of this volume that we create in here. For now, 0.1 has worked perfectly as we did previously. But if this is too heavy for you or this is not exactly uh, sharp enough for you, you can always reduce this or increase it. Let's convert this to a geometry again. So VDB convert, convert VDB, and let's convert it to polygons. And let's connect this in here. If we look at this now, this is a whole geometry that's connected. And if we display this the inside now, this should be a more accurate collision representation. Now, this the selected points that are inside, we need them to be moved to the outside. And the easy way to do that is to use the ray node, ray. And if we just select the method to be minimum distance and connect the, the collision to the collision we have in here, you will see that right now it's moving everything, but we only want it to be uh, affecting the inside group that we created in here. I remove the show guide geometry and deactivate and activate. You can see it's moving what's inside, but it's also introducing a few other problems as you can see in here. So we need to take uh, the group that's rayed to the collision and we need to blur that a bit. So if we just press on this create point group in the ray, we have the ray hit group and then we can add an attribute blur. And in here we can choose the uh, ray hit group let's remove the pin borders and let's do something like 10 
and it's a bit more smooth. We can also expand that group by a tiny bit. So if you add a group expand node, expand. So and connect this in here and let's choose the group to be uh, the ray hit group and we call it the same. And you can increase the, if we look at it, you can, you can decrease or increase the, the expansion. So we, let's keep it at two and let's go to the blue, great. Now it's not always we will have a collision that we use in here. So we need a way to switch between them. So let's just add a switch node and the time. So we're not going to have any collision. We, we want this to be at zero. And when we have a collision, we want this to be at one. And we can make this recognize a collision automatically by having a, an expression inside the select group to always check what's coming in here. And if, if it has any geometry, it will switch it automatically. So let's add a, a null node, which is just a, an empty node, basically. And let's call this Pull, which is a short for collision. And the expression we're going to use in here is called, uh, so first we, we will check how many points are incoming. So let's let's use a, an endpoint group and open brackets and close bracket. And we need to reference a node. So let's add two quotation marks and dot dot slash and write call, which is the collision node we created. So this is, will give us how many points there are in, in that node. As you can see, it has a lot of points. But we need to only check if it's larger than zero. So there's a larger than symbol and then zero. And now it automatically recognizes if there's a collision here or not. So simply, if we just remove this connection, you can see it switches the connection in here. So now it's using this one. If we connect this again, you can see it switches to this one. And at the end in here, let's just delete the groups we created. So group delete as we don't want them to be exported at the end. So let's just select the groups uh, inside and rate it group, which we created in here, and let's delete them. Great, now that we have a perfectly working procedural detangle system, we can just create this into an HDA. So let's uh, select all of this and press on the subnet, and let's call this procedural detangle, and right click create digital asset. Make sure to save to the hip file as we did before, hip HDA, and then create. And in here, let's just create a folder that we call settings. And let's dive inside the node to add a few parameters. So we need the number of iteration as a, the important thing here. So export this. And we need the blurring iterations. Export. And we can also add this uh, max weight attribute, which allows us to kind of change the amount of uh, distance it's going to move. And lastly, let's add the group, the edge group that we use here in the uh, uh, smooth vector in case we want to use another group that we want to avoid. But we also should probably add the voxel size in case we want to change that for the collision. So, and let's name these correctly. So I'm going to just call this collision voxel size and the group to be edge group and max weight to be max detangle weight. And let's add them inside the setting folder and let's just order them group first. And lastly, let's just add a uh, an icon. Let's search for detangle in here. And let's use this one. What we also can do just, uh, just so you know is uh, change the default amount in here. So I'm just gonna change the default iteration amount to 50 and the default blurring amount to 200. And I'm just going to pre press apply and then accept. Great. So let's just save this and save and match, match definition. And now we have a working procedural setup. Great. Now, if we just connect the, the sw uh, sweep and look at this and look at the hole in here, you can see it, the, the vines are detangled. Cool. Next episode, I'll show you the vellum method of detangling.